Okay, so this is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to show you how to make uh, SDL framework in C++ and code blocks. Um, SDL framework, what does it mean? Well, uh, it means that I'm going to show you how to set up your environment for uh, the game that you're going to create so that you can easily build your game from pieces and you kind of got some place to start instead of just a blank screen with uh you know and being bewildered by what to do next so um there's a couple building blocks that you have to do and as i might have previously mentioned or not this is a video adaptation of a tutorial by tim jones and uh, sdltutorial.com um, I have changed slight things here and there, uh, but mostly it's an adaptation of his tutorial. So he, 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 the uh, the reason, I mean, I choose to teach it because I think it's a great tutorial and uh, there's no reason for me to change, you know, a good thing. You know, there's no reason for me to uh, stray off except for those few, those couple little tiny changes that I've made here and there. Uh, namely the order in which classes are going to be introduced. So um, uh, also one of the good things about my tutorial is that you can listen to it at your own pace and you can ask me questions. I'll be glad to answer them. Whereas um, it is somewhat hard to reach anyone on the SDL tutorial website. I've tried it myself. There's a forum underneath each of the uh, tutorials um, but first of all, there's a lot of text to read and some people don't like reading. Some people are visual learners. And second of all, when you ask a question on that, um, I have, I haven't ever, ever had, um, Tim actually answer my questions. Um, I think other people have, and I'm not sure if that's correct or not. And you have to wait for a response for like ever here. I will try to get back with you as soon as I can. So, um, here we go. So here's code blocks. It's all set up with SDL uh, 1.2. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create. Well, first I'm going to create a project. Okay. And my project is going to be basically an empty project. Um, no frills here. I'm going to name it uh, game tutorial. Well, game tutorial. Um, SDL game tutorial. How about that? Okay, and um, here I'm going to finish, and here I have this project with nothing in it, okay? Um, all right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new class, and I'm going to go ahead and create a header for that class. It's going to be called C event. okay? So just like that, C event, and I'll shorten this header guard to cevent.h. And I'll add it to current project in debug and release targets. Okay, so here we go. We got this file that we're about to create. In this file, uh, this is going to be a uh, an adapter class, so to speak. It's going to be a class which will basically be used to inherit from and override the functions that we need. So it's going to be a class that processes events. You know, events are those things that occur. Uh, when the user clicks a button or, you know, uh, clicks a mouse or moves a mouse or pushes a button on the keyboard or closes the window. That's basically the idea. I'm not going to describe all the events. That's another thing I'm going to change from Tim Jones's tutorial. I'm going to implement those events that we need, uh, basically, and leave out, you know, things like joystick and whatnot that we can probably add later if we really need to. But this is the basic idea. So we start creating a class, C event. Okay, in this class, there is going to be all the members are going to be public. Okay, because this class basically has no state. It's uh, what's called an abstract class, so it's not meant to use all. It's not meant for use all by itself. It's meant to be inherited from. So it public. Now we have, of course, a constructor, which is the default constructor. We have the destructor which is going to be the virtual destructor because like I already said, we're going to be inheriting from this. Um, then there's going to be one non virtual function. It's going to be void on event. And this function is going to accept the SDL event. 
structure or rather a pointer to an SDL event structure and it's going to decide what the event is and which function should handle it. That's basically the idea. And now there's going to be a list of functions that are going to handle our events and they're all going to be virtual and they're going to all return void. So the first one is on exit. This function is what's going to be called when the user clicks the X in the exit window of the program. Now, the next one is on key down, right? That's the event that occurs when the user presses a button on the keyboard, uh, a key on the keyboard. That has several parameters that will be passed, namely which key was pressed, then which modifier key was held down, if any. That's like one of those shift, control, alt, or meta key. And finally, UN16 Unicode. That's for the international support. Like if the sometimes some keys have Unicode, um, like um, like Chinese and and uh, Arabic and other type of characters that do not have the representation in SDL. They just have the Unicode code, and so you want to put that into the function just in case we ever have to mess with those things. Now the on key up is going to be the exact copy of this almost except for the name of course now in case you're wondering why we need both down and up the event triggers whenever the key is either down or up and the idea here is like why do we need like some people might ask why do we need this these parameters for the on key up well, because sometimes you want to know which key you released, not just which key you pressed. For example, you have this complicated game where you got, you know, you're like moving around with your left hand and you're shooting with your right hand. And at the same time, you got like three different keys pressed down, right? Well, let's say you let go of the key that's your trigger key, the one that's uh, the shooting. The program needs to know to keep moving but stop shooting. So it needs to know which key was released not just which key was pressed. So on key up, on key down. Now, virtual on uh, left button down, that's the mouse button. And the parameters here are going to be where the mouse button was pressed. So int location x, int location y. That's gonna be the coordinates of where the mouse was when the button was pressed. Same exact thing on R button down. I don't think you, uh, I need to tell you what that means. On left button down, on right button down. Int location Y. Virtual on middle button down. Int location X, int location Y. And then all of that one more time with the up. So on L button up int location x int location y virtual on right button up int location x int location y and finally virtual on middle button up int location x int location y all right finally we have one more function to put in here and that's going to be on mouse motion right on mouse move on mouse motion so virtual on mouse motion now here there are like seven parameters that we would want to pass when the mouse moves when the mouse moves we want to know first of all where did it finally end up so in location x and in location y then we want to know where did it move relative to its previous position so that would be int rel x int rel y right and finally there's three more parameters and that is which of the three buttons if any were held down while the mouse was being moved so that would be bool left bool right and bool middle right okay so now we're gonna break this here so we can fit under the um, 80 character margin you know make it all pretty all right so that's it
So we got the constructor, the destructor, the sorting function, the one and only, the one function that's actually going to decide which one of these other functions gets called, and then a whole bunch of virtuals. That's it. All right. So now we have created a blueprint for this uh, C event class, and I'll see you in the next video to actually define the functions in it.